The deepest parts of space and our oceans are incredibly similar. Both are dark, cold, and so hostile that no human could survive without specialized equipment. The pressure alone would be enough to crush you. But here's where it gets weird. If you could somehow protect yourself, you would experience a strange weightlessness in space or a sense of floating buoyancy deep in the ocean. Both places are like totally different worlds from the one that we're used to. The best part is both space and the deep ocean are full of mist Mysteries. Our oceans are filled with strange creatures we haven't even discovered yet, and who knows what could be hiding out there. It's enough to make your imagination run wild. That was also enough to get NASA's attention. So what's NASA trying to find at the bottom of the ocean? But before we continue, if you are fascinated by the incredible discoveries and spectacular wonders of the universe, be sure to subscribe to The Rocket to continue exploring the cosmos with us. Space over ocean? First of all, you wouldn't think NASA would curb its obsession with rockets in space and shift its interest into the ocean depths, right? Well, surprise! Turns out that they are exploring the super deep, hadal zones of the ocean. Yes, that means that we can see underwater research stations, bizarre creatures, and a place so extreme that it holds more secrets. We actually know more about the surface of Mars than these parts of our own planet. Back in 1957, before NASA existed, people said we knew more about the moon than the bottom of the ocean. This was because figuring out the underwater landscape was super hard without modern sonar technology. Thankfully, things have changed, but even now we've only mapped about 23.4% of the ocean floor in detail. Okay, so 23% might not sound like a lot, but it's actually about three times the surface area of the moon. The point is, even though we've done better with the ocean than the moon, we've actually got more detailed maps of the surface of Mars. It's crazy to think that there are huge parts of Earth that are still so such a mystery to us. CSAT NASA was founded in 1958, but then in 1978, things changed when NASA launched CSAT, their first satellite dedicated to ocean study. CSAT could track winds, temperatures, waves, and all sorts of cool ocean stuff, helping scientists understand our planet's waters and how they influence our climate. But NASA's real ocean adventures kicked off around the year 2000. Think of the sea as a great way to train for space. That's where Aquarius Reef Base comes in. This underwater lab off the coast of Florida is the only one of its kind in the world. Built in 1986, it's basically a tiny underwater house where six people can live. It has a living area, a place to enter and exit, and it's designed for something called saturation diving. Saturation diving means scientists can stay underwater for weeks because their bodies adjust to the pressure. This gives them way more time to explore, like nine hours at once instead of just one or two. It's perfect for biologists who want a close-up look at the ocean environment. In 2001, NASA and other space agencies like ESA had an awesome idea. They realized the ocean could be a great place to train astronauts. Think about it. An underwater research base like Aquarius Reef Base has tiny living quarters, just like the International Space Station. Astronauts who spend time there get a real sense of what life is like way up in space. They also get to practice experiments and get used to living in a challenging environment where anything can happen. Nemo NASA kicked off a super cool program called NEMO, which is a short for NASA Extreme Environment Mission Operations, and started sending astronauts down to the habitat that same year. Since then, there have been 23 NEMO missions where astronauts from all sorts of space agencies work together for up to three weeks. They even get to wear deep sea suits and practice spacewalks outside the habitat, which helps them prepare for the day we go back to the moon or even travel way out to Mars. But the ocean isn't just for training astronauts. NASA has also figured out that it's the perfect spot to get machines ready for exploring the biggest oceans out there in space. Now let's take a journey into the depths of alien oceans. It's mind-blowing to think that our solar system hides several enormous oceans beyond Earth. Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Encladius are two prime examples. They have huge bodies of water trapped underneath thick layers of ice. To put things in perspective, scientists think Europa, a moon smaller than our planet, has twice the amount of water found in all of Earth's oceans combined. Why is this so fascinating? Well, even though these alien oceans are pitch black because sunlight can't reach them, something amazing could be happening down there. That combo of liquid water mixed with the rocky crust at the bottom creates the perfect recipe for life. Naturally, scientists are itching to figure out if life did form in these icy moon oceans. The good news is that NASA's Europa Clipper mission launches in 2024. This spacecraft will swoop past Europa, scanning 
using it to learn how thick its ice layer is and what the ocean's made of, and get us a way better understanding of the moon overall. But remember, the Europa Clipper is just the first step. Future Ocean Tech Future missions get even crazier. Think of cryobots, robots that use nuclear-powered heat sources to melt through Europa's six-mile-thick ice shell and dive into the ocean below. Now here's where things get wild. Once a cryobot is submerged, regular radio signals can't reach it anymore. It has to carry down a gigantic cable to stay in contact with us. This means these cryobots will have to be incredibly smart. They'll need to navigate another 60 to 120 miles down into the dark freezing high pressure ocean on their own. Their job? Search for whatever alien life might be swimming around in those mysterious depths. This is where science fiction starts to feel very real. Imagine the challenges, the discoveries. It's the kind of exploration that pushes our understanding of what's possible. After all, the deepest parts of our oceans may be more similar to the conditions on a moon like Europa than you'd first think. Europa has a massive ocean hiding beneath its icy crust. This ocean might be a hundred kilometers deep, and scientists think the pressure at the bottom is immense. We're talking a range that would be like going 13 to 26 kilometers deep in Earth's oceans. Incredibly difficult to survive, yes, but not as otherworldly as you might guess. Why? Well, the deepest point on Earth is the Mariana Trench. The pressure there is enough to absolutely crush a human or most machines we build. Yet, life somehow exists down there. It was totally unexpected when scientists first discovered it in 1977. They found entire communities of creatures, tube worms, crabs, fish, thriving around volcanic vents on the ocean floor. Turns out, life in the deep ocean is incredibly weird and awesome. We've seen giant hand-sized shrimp-like critters and these ethereal, almost alien-looking squid that can grow eight meters long. This entire zone of the ocean, named the Hadal Zone after the Greek god of the underworlds, proves that life finds some seriously incredible ways to adapt. So here's the exciting thing. If life can handle the crushing pressure and darkness of Earth's deep ocean, it gives scientists a lot more hope that something could exist in the oceans of a place like Europa. By exploring the limits of life in our own backyard, maybe we're getting closer to understanding the potential for finding life far beyond Earth. Underwater Funnels the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean floor are like giant gashes in the Earth's crust, mostly found where massive continental plates collide and one dives beneath the other. These deep trenches act like underwater funnels. Imagine loads of dead plants and animals getting sucked down from higher up in the ocean, gathering into a thick, sludgy mess at the bottom. Surprisingly, there are creatures that live down there in this Hadal zone, and when something big and edible drops down, they somehow know right away and rush to feast. Pretty crazy considering how little we understand of this place. Other deep sea life survives on the nutrient-rich soup blasting out of thermal vents. These vents are like the ocean's own chimneys spewing superheated liquid. If you combined all the deep ocean trenches on Earth, you'd have a hidden continent the size of Australia down there. Imagine the possibilities. NASA has big plans to explore these mysterious depths with fleets of self-driving underwater drones. Think of them like swarms of little robots. They'll need to sniff out interesting spots like those thermal vents and map out the underwater landscape using cameras and AI, similar to what NASA's rovers do on Mars. But here's the challenge. Not only will the drones face crushing pressure deeper than anyone has ever gone, but they'll need to handle wild temperature changes. Around thermal vents, it gets hot, like hundreds of degrees. The drones basically need to be temperature-proof to make it down there. The Nereus Explosion Back in 2014, scientists tried to explore the incredibly deep Kermadiac Trench off the coast of New Zealand using a deep-sea drone called Nerarius. This is an area that NASA is super interested in because it could help them plan for future missions. Sadly, the pressure at these extreme depths proved too much for Nereus, and it imploded. It was a major setback, especially since Nerarius had been successful in other deep-sea dives. But NASA hasn't given up on this dream of exploring the ocean's greatest depth. They've created a new underwater drone called Orpheus, which is basically a smaller and lighter version of Nereus. Orpheus is still undergoing testing in shallower waters, but NASA's ultimate goal is to use this kind of tech to explore the oceans of Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. The idea is that Orpheus's lighter design would make it way easier to transport on a rocket for such a distant space mission. Now, that trip to Europa might sound like far off science fiction, but it could be closer than we think. In 2023, NASA's planetary exploration science 
Science Technology Office, PESTO, brought together a whole team of top scientists to discuss how realistic this mission might be. Surprisingly, a lot of the technology we'd need already exists. The team concluded that sending a mission like this to Europa is feasible, super exciting from a scientific perspective, and actually the best way for us to directly look for signs of life on an ocean world in the near future. NASA's Europa Clipper mission is already gathering a ton of data, and the tech being experimented with on Orpheus and other underwater drones is constantly improving. So while NASA hasn't made any concrete plans yet, there's a decent chance we might actually see a mission like this happen in our lifetimes. It's a truly thrilling possibility. What if we succeed? Imagine a future where instead of sending rovers to Mars, we send submersible drones to explore the vast oceans hidden beneath the icy shells of moons in our solar system. What will these drones find in those dark alien seas? It's a captivating thought because, as strange as it sounds, those oceans might feel oddly familiar. We are creatures born of water. The earliest complex life on Earth emerged from the oceans, and all living things need water to survive. So instead of the barren rocks and dust we typically associate with alien worlds, exploring extraterrestrial oceans offers a golden promise, a sense of underwater homecoming even if it's a place we've never been. The real question, of course, is this. Does something else live in those distant oceans? It's pure speculation at this point, but even the possibility is electrifying. Discovering that life formed not once, but twice within our solar system would be a universe-altering revelation. Life is likely abundant throughout the cosmos, and we should be prepared to find it in many forms on many faraway worlds. But the real hurdle is proving that life exists elsewhere. We'll have to perfect our technology here on Earth before we can hope to crack open the icy armor of these ocean-bearing moons. Only then can we plunge into those pitch-black depths and find the answers we've sought for for so long. For NASA, the mission to search for life within our solar system actually begins within our oceans. By studying the extraordinary ways that life adapts and thrives in the extremes of Earth's watery environments, scientists hope to develop the tools and techniques necessary to one day find definitive signs of life in the vast, hidden oceans of another world, whether it's on a moon of Jupiter or Saturn. So that was the video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the rocket, and smash that bell icon so you never miss an update. See you in the next one. Till then, keep exploring.